Happy Festivus, everyone. Uh, I am Sleepy Reader, and uh, I just had an itch to do some comic book reviews. It's Christmas Eve, and I'm going to have to run over to some relatives soon. Um, I wanted to say that X-Men Extreme Number 8 was really good. Um, you probably can still pick up 7.1 also, the supposed jump on point, which has the uh, oh-so-memorable... Xavier Space Whale, which eventually attacks Earth. Um, it's a cool issue, which had okay art till near the end where they switched artists and it went kind of downhill. Um, that's the weakness of the Extreme X-Men. It, it, it at best has okay art. Um, the, the stories are just so wacky and fun and there's always a cliffhanger and there's always cool twists and turns. Um, but you need it would it would be it would be go from a really good book to a great book if they had a you know a dedicated artist or artistic team that that really gave it some extra attention or something and so x men extreme number eight uh has a pretty decent artist um paco diaz uh it's not bad. But, you know, he'll probably be replaced next issue. What it does have, it has Dazzler versus Dazzler. Uh, one Dazzler is the last survivor of a zombie apocalypse, and the other Dazzler is the Dazzler from our 616 Earth, I guess. Um, and then they go visit a, um, a Professor Xavier, who is a cute little unicorn who creates cupcakes and things like that. Oh, uh, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, it's just wacky, but they make it work. Uh, so one Dazzler goes against the other Dazzler to save the uh, the cute little unicorn, Professor Xavier. <laughs> There's this great scene where they telepathically contact whoops, the supposedly good Xavier, who doesn't seem to want to talk to them. So he says, he literally says, bzzzt. Oh, I'm losing contact. Bzzzt. <laughs> it's just really funny to see Professor Xavier done this way. Um, and it ends with a real cliffhanger. And uh, can it really be? Probably not, because these things never really are. But anyway, uh, definite, you know, fun. This is consistently one of my fun comics to read every month, or uh, sometimes every week, it seems. Uh... That's the wrong issue of Daredevil, isn't it? This issue of... <laughs> talking to myself. This issue of Daredevil was continued to be really good. Um, had some twists. Had a good continuation of the story with uh, Matt and Foggy. Uh, left some mysteries uh, behind. Uh, still very happy with Daredevil. Happy with the Chris Samney art. Uh, excellent stuff. Um, next issue, if you're not reading Daredevil, next issue, issue 22, will probably be a good jumping on point. Otherwise, I'd say maybe go back to issue 19 or 18 if you can grab those and get them all. Um, and there's lots of trades out of the Mark, Mark uh, Wade run of Daredevil also. So def that was my pick of the year, um, Daredevil was. Um, although there's so many other books that could have been. Saga had this killer cover. It was a good issue. It continues the feeling that in this second arc, Saga's building more slowly, and so you're not quite as wowed with each issue. It's still a very good issue. I feel like uh, Fiona, Fiona um, Staples' art, that's so good to begin with, uh, just keeps getting better. You know, she's doing her own coloring, and the coloring is really great. Oh, can't show you that giant testicle page. But, um, you know, it's it's such a solid book. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, a few more issues, it'll start sort of taking off into the wow zone again. Part of it maybe is we've focused more closely on our couple and, and their in-laws, which is interesting. It's amusing and everything. But I think I was really interested in the robot prince and in the stock, and the whatever the name of the other assassin was. So those subplots have taken a back seat, in, and that's kind of uh, 
Just made it a little less exciting. Hawkeye, that's been quite good. Uh, I thought this was the best issue of Hawkeye yet. I love this cover, but I, I love the work that Aja or Aha is doing, and the way they uh, cut through time is just wonderful. It's definitely like the literary take on superheroes in a way, but fun literary, you know, because they keep Hawkeye a, a fun character. But um, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's, they're just stretching with each issue, at least each issue that David Aha's in. And so this, this is excellent stuff. A little bit of a downer. Um, I was excited over Black Beetle. It's drawn by Francisco Francavilla and the art's fun. It's also written by him, and there's nothing horrible about the writing. There's, it's not like Dan DiDio or anything. Thank you for going to sleep on me, computer. It's not like Dan DiDio or anything, but it's, um, it's sort of a one-dimensional pulp fiction story with no other texture to it, no interesting beats, nothing, and, and nothing unusual, nothing you wouldn't expect. It's exactly what you would expect from kind of an old-fashioned pulp hero who wears a costume but has no superpowers. He shoots guns at Nazis. Um, there was a slight hint of interest that the, Nazi, the, the evil Nazi brigade was called the Werewolf Brigade or the Werewolf Company or Werewolf Corps. Um, but that so far wasn't followed up on. Maybe there'll be more on that in future issues. This was the zero issue, and it was actually a collection of three chapters that originally appeared in Dark Horse Presents. The art and the coloring, I believe Franco Villa does his own coloring, are wonderful, and it's, it's certainly worth $2.99 uh, if you like his art. Um, very nice stuff there, but just, just sort of generic story-wise. Not generic at all is Wonder Woman. I can't quite get a feel yet of where they're going with Orion, like what his personality is, because he was kind of... In the original New Gods by Jack Kirby, he was kind of the, the brutal, angry, violent one. And he was always uh, paired with Light Ray, who was the peaceful, nonviolent one, um, relatively speaking. Um, and now, yeah, it's hard to tell where he's going. And I don't like, I'm not in love with this kind of track suit or ski jacket kind of jacket that he's wearing but other than that we got beautiful art by um cliff chang and um a good continue good solid continuation of the story of wonder woman uh and all these uh greek gods that she's involved with and the demi demigods and such it does feel a little bit like we're getting a demigod of the month kind of as part of these stories, which is not terrible, but it's a little more predictable. Um, kind of like Saga, this really wowed me in the first 12 issues, and since then it's been a good continuation of the story, but hasn't had quite that zingy wow factor, and I thought it would come back with Orion, but... I'm still I'm still waiting to see where where they go with Orion. There is some really cool visual stuff, uh, not really involving Orion, with like uh, the arrival of these ice giants or whatever, and this strange son of Zeus that that we keep getting little bits of is really intriguing. Um, yeah. Oh, and it looks like we're about to have a big battle between Wonder Woman and. Uh, and Orion, but we'll see where that goes. So I'm I'm glued to my chair or whatever. I'm, I'm glued to Wonder Woman. I'm certainly not, don't want to miss an issue. Um, so yeah, uh, that's my attempt at some pretty quick reviews. I, I did it in nine minutes. That's really fast for me. Um, I will be doing my special Christmas sleepy vlog 11.3 tomorrow. Uh, where I pick the people I'm going to be giving my gifts to. Um, those of you who listen to Sleepy Vlog 11.1 .1 will know what I'm talking about. Um, so I will see you tomorrow. I am real busy, so I'm not keeping up with everyone's videos right at the moment, but I, I do plan to uh, 
watch as many as I can in the coming coming week. So I hope everyone's having a great time. Happy Festivus. Happy Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy, happy. Bye-bye.